Kenya, the African country with the biggest doping problem, is seeking to fight the vice head-on. Sports Scene was at the heart of the 2019 Athletics Kenya Conference to bring you the latest effort to stem the menace that threatens to discredit the rich and proud heritage of the sport that has catapulted the nation to global acclaim. Hello and thank you for joining us on Sports Scene. This is your home for all things African sport from the continent and beyond. Great to have you joining us once again this evening. I'm Mahia Mutua in Nairobi. Let's check out what else is coming up tonight. From Soweto to Nairobi, we take a look at some of the fiercest football derbies in Africa. And still to come, Tanzania's, Tanzania crowns the country's fittest man and woman in Dar es Salaam. Welcome to the program now. Athletics Kenya has partnered with the Athletics Integrity Unit in an effort to stamp out the menace that has seen the country lead Africa in doping violation cases. In its third annual AK conference this week, the AIU was invited to train Kath uh, Kenyan athletes on the issue as the country works towards moving out of the World Athletics Category A watch list. Here is CGTN's Mohamed Abubakar with more. Kenya is renowned worldwide for her athletics prowess, topping the charts at the 2015 World Championships in Beijing before finishing second at the 2017 and 2019 editions in London and Doha. However, the integrity of the sport in the nation has been dodged by the soaring cases of doping that has seen several top-tier athletes sanctioned. This has seen Kenya remain in the World Athletics Category A watch list since 2016. Athletics Kenya has since been on the front foot, fighting the scourge with its annual conference with athletes taking center stage in the fight against the vice. You know that uh, a few of our athletes have been found having gone through this problem of uh, doping and so on. And they have, they, have, they have gone through the problem, I mean the, 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 the normal process uh, of anti-doping rule violation, cautioning, punishment and so forth and so on. But you see in the process there are also new systems, new drugs new things that come into being. And so this is one of, the, uh, one of the reasons why the athletes are here, so that we can educate them on the new issues. The conference started with training off-road runners with all the world record holders in the men and women half and full marathons present. It's a big embarrassment. It's unfortunate actually for topping to, to actually be in Kenya. But only only that I want to actually tell those who, who topped, to those who are actually trying to top that uh, it's immoral that uh, you actually engage in, in a shortcut or in a heel methods of, uh, of, of making your improvement in sport or performing well. So it's good to understand what sport is. It's good to understand that sport is a career. When I go for races and they keep talking about someone who has doped, I feel bad because it is like it's me, because it's a fellow athlete using energy like me. Whenever I hear that a Kenyan athlete has been banned for doping, it's wrong and that is why AIU have brought us here to give us guidance on doping matters. The training was being conducted by Athletics Integrity Unit officials who praised Kenya's progress in the fight against doping. We've um, really uh, noticed all the major improvements that have been done in Kenya comparing to where Kenya was four years ago. There's been a, a national anti-doping agency created. Uh, there, there's been, you see today, the level of engagement that the authorities have shown. So Kenya is on the right track. I'm not able to tell you here, now, here, how long it will take for, for Kenya to be, uh, to be under, uh, downgraded, but we really observe significant improvements. This year, Athletics Kenya did put in a few extra lessons, such as media training and financial management. Kenya is still far from being removed from the World Athletics Category A watch list, but the progress in the fight is gathering momentum, with government, federation and athletes leading the charge. Mohamed Abubakar, CGTN. Well, now the 12th edition of the African Games in Morocco this year saw the adoption of the Independent Observer Programme a first in the history of the competition. This came as a cooperative approach which saw the World Anti-Doping Agency and the local organizing committee optimize anti-doping efforts at the African Games. 
While taking note of general compliance with rules and procedures, the independent observer team was primarily engaged in looking at the implementation of doping control policy to see that plans were developed and carried out effectively. The observer's report that was released in November appreciated the local organizing committee for the implementation of the program, but also highlighted that a lot of work still needs to be put into planning, doping control operations, tests and results management. I believe this is the first time in the history of the African Games that we have had an anti-doping control program of this quality. Yes, in the past we used to do tests, but we had no proper experience and the proper resources needed to carry out these tests efficiently. But this time we had an experienced team. We also had the anti-doping independent observers here. Where we went wrong, they offered necessary advice and this can only help us to be good at our job and also having a clean, fair and competitive sport. Right now, let's get more insights into this story. I'm now joined by our guest, Bernard Rotich, a sports writer with Kenya's Daily Nation, live in Eldoret. Bernard, welcome to Sports Scene. I'll begin by asking you, do you think uh, this year's AK conference will have a big impact in the fight against doping in the country? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know uh, athletes, have uh, the, the, they were invited and the, the seminar or the conference has really helped a lot. Uh, if you can remember, about four years ago, there was uh, less of such uh, meetings, but uh, coming up with such conference and ex especially starting with the road runners and the marathon uh, athletes, it was a good plus because these are the people who mostly uh, there are so many in Kenya, and they, most of them normally travel to other countries to participate in, this, in, in the races. And uh, talking about doping, I think the seminar has really, it, 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 it's a plus or it's, a, uh, it's something good because they are going, it's going to change the, the, the mentality. Remember, maybe this thing happens because of ignorance, but be, uh, bringing up the AIU uh, or the integrity unit to teach and uh, give lessons to athletes that was a good uh, idea and uh, more of these meetings should be done because remember Kenya has is the leading leading uh, in terms of uh, uh, road runners and uh, marathoners there are a lot of athletes in Kenya and uh, given given the chance this will be a good plus for the country and uh, maybe the menace will be wiped away and uh, Bernard obviously there are a number of voices especially in this uh, part of the world that believe that the AIU is biased against African athletes. Uh, do you believe that their presence here will have eased some of those fears? Yeah, it's true. Uh, many think that uh, AIU is biased against Africa, but seeing the team from uh, from uh, the integrity unit, uh, athletics integrity unit, unit coming themselves to come and do the lessons here and uh, in Kenya and to interact with the marathoners and uh, and give out the, do the do's and, uh, and don'ts. That I think is uh, something that maybe it will change the, 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 that, that mentality that AIU is uh, against Africa. Remember, uh, most, uh, most of the, uh, Kenya is in category of course and uh, we are the leading in a uh, number of athletes who have doped. So, uh, it's something that seeing uh, the, the AIU officials coming themselves to, to give all the lessons and teach the athletes, I think that is the right mentality. No, now people should change the mentality saying that, uh, by, by not saying that, that Kenya or, or AIU is targeting Africa or Kenya or Ethiopia. And finally, uh, obviously, despite uh, criminalizing doping in Kenya uh, back in 2016, the cases here do seem to keep rising. Why do you think this is the case? Uh, the numbers keep rising maybe because one we have I can say it uh, there is a uh, there is ignorance most of the athletes and I, I can say ADAC has not maybe reached many of the athletes I remember I said Kenya has the largest number of athletes in the world and we have a lot of upcoming and uh, of course uh, elite athletes and uh, I think getting getting out, uh, rid of the problem is getting into the grassroots and getting everybody who is on on uh, on the on the running uh, the running field.
to get to know what is wrong and what is right, get to know what they use. So one, the, the one thing is ignorance. The athletes need to be educated. And uh, remember, if we get education to the grassroots level, uh, remember uh, the national, uh, it's called ADAC, Anti-Doping Agency of Kenya. They, they, they wanted to introduce the, the syllabus, uh, the ADAC, ADAC wanted to introduce the, the, uh, the doping as a syllabus in primary schools. So that is the right thing to do as you start talking about doping in the junior level. So by the time they get into that senior level, you will not hear of doping again. So the, the right thing is to start early preparing these athletes because ignorance is what is making doping menace maybe increase in Kenya. All right, Bernard, thank you very much for that. Bernard Rotich, sports writer with the Daily Nation here in Kenya, joining us live there from Eldoret. Well, the doping menace continues to be a sore thumb uh, for Africa with 15 athletes, 12 from Kenya, two from Morocco, and one Nigerian banned for illegal substance abuse or other anti-doping violations so far this year. Let's now take a look at some of the high-profile doping cases that shook the continent. Well, it's time for us to take a short break. Here's what's coming up on Sports Scene. From Soweto to Nairobi, we take a look at some of the fiercest football derbies in Africa. How would you create your legend? On the field. On the tracks, in the arenas of Africa. Were you born to be a player? Could this moment be yours? Sports Scene, find your game. Welcome back. Let's shift focus now to the beautiful game. Africa has many intense football rivalries. The Cairo Derby between Zamalek and Al Ahli, the Mashe Meji Derby between Gormahia and AFC Leopards, just to name a few. But not many have the ability to divide a nation as in the case of South Africa's Soweto Derby. CGT and CS Duplessis kicks off our focus on the hottest football rivalries on the continent. The Soweto Derby is the most anticipated fixture on the South African football calendar. The showdown between Soweto Giants, Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates has been in a marquee clash steeped in history, controversy and cracking football since the 1970s, capturing the imagination of millions of South Africans, often leading to the country coming to a standstill for 90 minutes. Whether it is the biggest on the continent or not, is, you know, I guess you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of opinions. I, I, I can go as far as saying that it is definitely one of the biggest on the continent and I can, stretch this by, I can stretch it by saying that it is definitely one of the biggest games in the world because of the sheer magnitude of the interest it generates. The iconic FNB Stadium or Soccer City as it's affectionately known by football fans across the Rainbow Nation is home to South African football and home to the Soweto Derby. One of the biggest on the continent is watched by millions in over 50 countries as they try to get a glimpse of Orlando Pirates taking on their rivals, Kaiser Chiefs. It's uh, definitely something uh, special where 
and that uh, shows where players, each and everybody uh, in your squad of 32, uh, wants to be involved. Uh, you can see it in a training session, you can see it in matches. Like they say, uh, to whom much is given, much is expected, and for us is uh, to make sure that we, we account, number one, but also represent uh, not just South African football, because that's what it is, it's an advert for South African football. As soon as the fixtures are released by the Premier Soccer League, the first thing fans look for is the date of the derby. That's when the rivalry is reignited with fans from both clubs exchanging verbal blows and talking up their respective teams' chances in the sold-out Soweto showdown. It's an event for African football. Uh, it's an event that is not just about 90 minutes. It's a cultural exchange. It's about the history of this country. During the dark days in this particular country, in the 70s, in the 80s, this is the only event people looked up to for hope to get together, whereby for a month up to the fixture, they could only talk about this event. The derby isn't just a football match. It is more than that and has been for almost 50 years. It continues to attract a massive audience on television and radio, and if you're lucky to get a ticket, usually sold out in hours, you happen to be the lucky owner of what remains the hottest ticket in town. CS Duplicy, CGTN, Soweto. Now here in Kenya, the fixture dubbed the Mashemeji or In-Laws Derby, where Gor Mahia play AFC Leopards, brings out the very best from their fiercely loyal and divided supporters. CGTN's Mohamed Abubakar went to the latest edition and filed the following report. From afar, it might look like a busy weekend in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. But a second look will show you something different. It is in fact the derby day when two of Kenya's oldest and most followed football clubs, Gormahia and AFC Leopards, are set to play. And just like every other match between two rivals, fans throng the capital with songs and dance in show of might. This is a big, big game, Mashemeji Derby. The importance of this is that it gives us morale, so that when we go to the game, we win. When we do this, we give our people morale because they know we have to pass over here. In this league, we would rather get defeated by any other team but not AFC. The fixture dubbed Mashemeji Derby is the biggest football game in the country. Mashemeji is a Swahili word for in-laws, due to the huge support from the neighboring communities of the Abaluya, who are affiliated to FC Leopards, and the Luo, who constitute the support base for record 18-time league champions Gurmahia. The importance of this match is that we're in-laws. So we have met here in Nairobi as two tribes that play football a lot in Kenya. Today, the wife is on the other side, and I am on the other side. We are going to meet the in-laws on the other side. And when in the stadium, the cheers are deafening. And like most African derbies, you can rarely go without sporting unique symbols that fans believe define the club. This Bible contains all the rules of Gormaya. So when you want to join the team, you follow this Bible, and when you do, everything will be okay. On this particular day, Gormahia thrashed FC Leopards four goals to one to claim the bragging rights over their bitter rivals. That set off a big party among the Green Army, commanding the streets in frenzy. As for FC Leopards fans, they emptied the stadium early to lick their latest wounds. Mohamed Abubakar, CGTN. Well, crossing borders now as the year ends, Tanzanian fans have drawn battle lines ahead of the eternal derby uh, involving champion Simba and their major rivals Yanga that will rock the national stadium in Dar es Salaam on the 4th of January. Their rivalry spans four decades and CGTN's Daniel Kijo looks at the intense history and talks to opposing fans determined to start the new year with a victory. Simba Sports Club and Yanga Sports Club are the two biggest football clubs in Tanzania. They have been arch rivals for years. Simba means lion in Swahili, while Young Africans locally is known as Team Yawananchi, which means the citizens team. The teams have 47 Tanzania Premier League titles between them. Yanga has been the most successful of the two in Tanzanian football club history, with a total of 27 league titles, 
while Simba Sports Club has won Tanzania's Premier League 20 times. Historically, Simba versus Young African matches have been highly anticipated by football fans across Tanzania. Yet again, these two teams are now set to meet in a month's time. As it stands, Simba currently leads the table with 25 points, while Yanga lies in 8th place with 17 points. Fans from both sides say they plan to start their year with a strong win. As Yanga fans, we say this derby is ours. It's our turn. Last season we had one draw and they defeated us in one match. This time we are good. We believe in ourselves, 100%. Firing the coach of the team is because he wasn't aligning with what we wanted. There were some players we wanted in the squad, but he wasn't giving them a chance to play. That was a problem. We didn't think he would get as far. We now have a new coach, and we believe Yunga will concede many goals. We are ready as Simba. We are good now. We made proper investments. We are not poor like the other team. We don't go begging in the street. Simba is rich. We believe in ourselves and everything we do. When the fourth comes, we will defeat them easily, very easily. Leading isn't an issue. There was a time they led the league, but we caught up and defeated them. Two years ago, there was a time they were ahead of us by five points, but we caught up with them and defeated them. Them leading the league doesn't scare us. We still have matches to play. Recent history has favoured Simba, who will be aiming to outplay their bitter rivals. Yanga is equally confident of a derby victory. But the league is far from over as it runs till May next year. For now, football fans will just have to wait and see. Daniel Kijo, CGTN, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. And the Egyptian Football Association has decided to postpone the highly anticipated Premier League derby between Al Ahli and Zamalek based on a security warning. For weeks, no timing was given for the most popular club football match in the country. Earlier this month, the EFA settled on the 19th of February next year. CGTN's Adel Mahrui now tells us how many in Egypt are expecting further delays. Originally, Al Ahli and Zamalek should have faced each other in the fourth week of the Egyptian Premier League. That was last October. For a nation still banning football fans, Security officials recommended delaying that match. I think the reasons are convincing. It's been years now we haven't had a regular schedule in the league. They say their security fears and all the league officials must commit to safety. For Zamalek, it was good news because I believe they weren't ready technically to face Al Ali again especially after their Super Cup defeat. Egypt's most popular derby has been delayed so far twice. It's now scheduled on February 19. Unfortunately, that's just four days after the African Super Cup set between Zamalek and Tunisian side Esperance Sportif. CAF is holding the match in Doha, Qatar. It is very likely that could force the EFA to postpone Egypt's derby for a third time. If Zamalek faces a negative result in the African Super Cup, I believe the president of the club will put pressure to once more delay the derby. These delays have a great impact. Egypt will be having back-to-back -back football seasons without any break for five continuous seasons. That will affect many teams, especially those in African competitions. Egyptian fans are quite frustrated by these multiple delays and the impact it could have on the national team. Any further postponement and the entire league will be cancelled. The derby must never affect the league and determine its future. That's unacceptable. The current EFA are replacing exactly the previous boards. There is no news. They said they won't delay matches, but they lied. When the interim EFA board took office, they've promised to hold tight to the league's calendar. Egypt's top football competition was scheduled to end in May. It's now set for mid-June. Any further delays could see it stretch to July. Adil Mahroui, CGTN, Cairo. Finally, shifting focus away from football, the search for the fittest man and woman in Tanzania went down recently in an extreme competition 
in Dar es Salaam, where contestants rather were put through grueling strength and endurance challenges as the ultimate test of their power and agility. CGTN's Daniel Kijo was amongst the enthralled crowd that witnessed the spectacle and brings us more. These exercises are meant to push these athletes to their limits. Blood, sweat and tears are literally what it takes to be crowned the fittest man or woman in the country. Some break along the way, but trainer Fike Wilson, a former bodybuilder, says in this contest, there is no mercy. We had 100 push-ups, we had 100 sit-ups, you know, we had 100 dips. So if you complete the number, you're going to be liable to come be a champion. Otherwise, you won't become a champion without that. That's the criteria. Unlike the last competition two years ago, women are competing for the inaugural Miss Fitness title. These are some of the best athletes in the country. Each man and woman here wants to prove they're the best among the best. With the title, the winner not only gets a cash prize, but also national recognition. The different challenges are meant to test overall strength, both physical and mental. But in the end, Richard, Richard Lupembe and Loveness Tarimo outperformed their peers, each winning $1,500 in prize money. My patience, courage and strength are what led me to my victory and nothing else. Trust me, yes people train and had bigger muscles but no cardio. People should not be scared. They should try it. As you see, I am succeeding at this sport. It's something I love. So I beg them to start and just visit a gym. This competition is more than just having the power to lift weights. It's also about endurance and psychological determination. Having demonstrated those skills, the victors have shown themselves worthy of the titles. Daniel Kijo, CGTN, Dar es Salaam. Well, on that note, that's it for this edition of Sports Scene here on CGTN. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to send your feedback to the contacts on your screen now and give us a follow on our digital media platforms. I'm Mahe Mutua. Thanks for watching. We leave you with some sporting highlights this week, which come to us from the final day of the East African Safari Classic Rally, which drew to an end on Friday in Mombasa.